What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit subscribe, join Ninja Nation, and now without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Brandon Woodruff, who had five strikeouts in seven innings. He had a nasty changeup and his curveball and fastball working. And to show you how tough that fastball and curveball are, here's a 97 mile an hour fastball and an 87 mile an hour curveball. And you can see why you might be fooled into swinging at that curveball that ends up out of the zone. Jeffrey Springs had eight strikeouts in five innings, giving up two runs, mostly due to his changeups and his fastball. He has a 37% whiff rate on that changeup. Ty Walker had some six sliders and splitters on his way to five strikeouts in six innings. By the way, I'm going to be dropping some new bucket hats soon, and Ty Walker is very excited about it. Justin Verlander had these sliders and curveballs on his way to seven strikeouts in six innings. Glenn Otto had this mean slider and had five strikeouts in five innings. Justin Steele went six innings and had nine strikeouts. Nice. Thanks to his nasty slider. Josiah Gray had this dirty 86-mile-an-hour slider and had five strikeouts. Jose Quintana had six Ks in six innings, thanks to these curveballs. Nick Pavetta had these pretty knuckle curves and five strikeouts. He was outdueled by Kyle Wright, who had five Ks in six innings, thanks to his wicked curveballs. And check out these back-to-back J.D. Martinez swords versus Wright. That sinker and curveball are filthy. Chris Bubich had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up Warner and Run. And check out this nice swing by Andrew Vaughn. That is a negative 69-degree launch angle, and the ball went one foot. As a pitcher, that's about as nice a result as you can get off a changeup. Sandy Alcantara had this 99-mile-an-hour paint, then a 91-mile-an-hour nasty changeup, and this 92-mile-an-hour wrong-way slider. Yes, that is a slider that ran arm side seven inches. Sandy doesn't do this intentionally, but as someone who categorizes pitches regularly, this always blows my mind. I did this close up so you can see the difference in grips between his slider and his changeup. What happens is his slider has a lot of gyro spin, think of a bullet, and if that rotation is just a little off, the ball goes the wrong way. Check out this crazy overlay of Alcantara's 97 mile an hour four seam fastball and a 91 mile an hour changeup. You can see what makes that dude so tough to hit. It was a weird outing for Sandy because he sailed through the first seven innings and then ended up giving up three runs in the eighth inning as the Phillies strung together a bunch of hits. Alcantara ended up giving up four earned runs, raising his ERA to 2.01. He's still filthy though. Speaking of filthy, Tuki Toussaint had six Ks in five scoreless innings and showcased his absolute hammer curveball. He also had this wicked two-seamer and splitter. Robbie Ray had seven Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had this vicious 88-mile-an-hour backfoot slider. But my filthiest and nastiest pitcher of the day yesterday was Nestor Cortez. Nestor had these fastballs. Actually, his fastball was up to 95 miles an hour yesterday. And nasty breaking balls. But what is mind-blowing about Nestor is the way he messes with hitters. Here's him messing with timing on two consecutive pitches with his wacky windup and then a quick pitch. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of those two windups. And then here are three consecutive pitches where Nestor Cortez changes his arm angle on each one. And I did an overlay of it. As a hitter, you have to face a guy who is changing his mechanics and changing his arm angles. This is nightmare fuel for hitters because it creates a ton of timing issues and pitch shapes that you have to deal with. You can see why hitters have such a tough time despite Nestor's pure stuff not being overwhelming. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Evan Phillips had these wicked sliders. Pete Fairbanks had this overpowering 99 mile an hour fastball. Andre Pallante had this fastball and wicked sliders. Check out this overlay of Paul Seawald's slider and fastball. James Karinchek had this hammer curveball and then went full Karinchek. Never go full Karinchek. But seriously, play the game with emotion. I love it. 
Sir Anthony Dominguez had this 99 mile an hour fastball and six slider. But my filthiest reliever of the day was Emmanuel Classe and his flaming cutters. Simply unfair. He lowered his ERA to 1.32 and has a very nice 0.69 whip on the season. There were unintentionally a lot of 69 references today. I hope everyone in Ninja Nation has a nice day. Before we get to my moment of zen, I'd like to give a shout out to Jada Lee, a 16-year-old Canadian female pitcher who pitched in the Canada Games against boys, and she became the first female pitcher to compete in the Canada Games. You go, Jada, and a heck of a PFP there. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Yeah, I rubbed up quite a few balls in my life. A uh, phrasing... What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are for the Field of Dreams game. Since MLB is switching it up, I'm gonna switch it up too. I'm gonna do a same game parlay with the unders. I'm gonna take Nick Lodolo under six and a half Ks and Drew Smiley under four and a half Ks. What would your picks of the day be? 